Hello my pixel people, I am the Exo Genesis and this is the First Boot Gameplay. First Boot is the show which plays the opening sections of all the latest and greatest games in order, in order to give you guys an unbiased first impressions on whether you should go out and get this game or try this game yourself. The game we are playing today is Gotham City Imposters which has just gone free to play, it's available on Steam. And yes, Gotham City Imposters was released as a... Uh, Pay for a game, I believe it was not a full price game, it was more like £15 or $30, I'm not too certain. And that was only about 6 months ago and they have recently gone free to play, so we're going to look at some of the reasons why it might have gone free to play. And yeah, so we're going to jump straight into this and because it's a PC game, as always, we go straight into the help and options menu. And we'll check the settings to make sure we've got all the settings that we require. So we've got auto detect, we've got an FOV slider which is I'm so so grateful for. I believe that on original release it never had an FOV slider and it got quite a lot of hate so it's really good to see that they've added that in. And on the advanced options we get effects details, effect detail, sound quality limit, FSAA, texture level of detail, enable shadows, texture filtering, light detail, shadow detail and vertical sync. So basically everything you're going to need for a PC game. Yeah, that's as simple as it is. On the sound settings, nice and easy. Key bindings, you can actually like change everything. So we've got no kind of issues with it being a PC port. Sensitivity doesn't go below zero, which is kind of a little bit of an um, issue for me. I play on a very low sensitivity. And I've got my mouse on the lowest DPI settings it'll go to and my aim sensitivity on zero and it's still quite a lot higher than what I would have expected or liked. So I'm kind of hoping that if a few people complain about this issue that it might get fixed. So we've got toggle crouch and aim which is you know if you hold the key or not. Quite a lot of games don't have these options and it's a real shame because I really really hate having to toggle. Okay so let's get straight into this now. And before we go into it, we're going to go to Secret Identity. This is where your character customization and everything is, basically. And we get to edit loadouts, edit our costumes for each team. A calling card, which is like that little thing that you get in Call of Duty. You get to join a gang. I'm not so sure about the gang functionality right now. Basically, I've joined Killer Watts. You just get a random invite and... There's a turf war, so... I'm not 100% certain how this works, but... My gang's getting its ass kicked at the moment, so I'm going to have to win some more matches, I think. Mascots. I don't know what these are. Let's see. I want a cool one. Oh, that's cool. Oh, so I've got to buy these in the store. So these are real money items. That'd be cool. I might actually get one later. So we'll go back. Okay, so the menu's a little bit fiddly, like, it wouldn't let me just go back for, like, one step, it put me back to the main menu. My calling card. Yes! A chicken saying pawned, and I'm not wearing any pants. Hmm. You get all these to choose from, so let's have a see if there's anything new which has popped up. No. Let's look. Nah, that's cheesy. That's quite cool. It's cheesy cool. You know what I mean. And the symbol, what should I have? I have pawned currently. Is there anything more insulting? That's what this is for. This is to make people rage, isn't it? Slam, brat, thud, zing. Nah, I'm going to stick with pawned. Pawned works. And my catchphrase, you unlock these as you're playing as well. Please for your butter your bread. What? Where's the fire? Double or nothing. Love the hammer. Hmm. There's any nice ones? I want a nice one. I wear monocles. Simple. So that is your calling card. And then we're going to go into some of the customization. I've got a little bit of cash, so I might be able to buy something. And this is one that I've, this is like the default kit, but this is one that I've been customizing so far. And no, you don't get to pick if it's a female character. It's all based on your body type. So let's have a look at the hat. We got God her teeth. <laughs> they are some teeth, mate. They are teeth. Look at that, 1,500. You actually get about between 50 and 100 um, costume coins per match. So it, even though these are quite high, it doesn't seem totally unreasonable. And the ones without these prices 
are only purchasable through Steam, I believe. Look at that. The Rascal. We'll have the Rascal. There we go. Logo. Anything nice. What's the most expensive one? That I can, that I can actually pay for. No, no. Come on, there's got to be some... Oh, I'm not happy with any of these. That's a real shame. That's over the power. Merit badge. Merit badge looks okay. Business back. Let's have the... There we go. I was actually saving up money. I shouldn't have really just gone and bought that. But So that's the customization that you actually get. And you get to preview the body types wearing it as well. So, obviously... That's what I look like in real life, so I would I should really be playing as that body type, I suppose. Anyway, so and you got your Joker's costumes, which is basically the same. I haven't played around with these yet, simply because I can't afford it. Basically, you need to get the costume points. I don't want to get like one badass character for each faction, so I've worked on the bats first, and then we got to edit our loadouts. So this is like. What a lot of people are wanting to see. Is it pay to win, basically? That's what everybody, I think, wants to know. And the honest answer is, no, it's not. I don't think there's anything that you can buy which is overpowered. I don't believe you can actually buy any weapons with... You can buy them on Steam to unlock them earlier, but I believe that everything you get, you can unlock anyway. Because if you look at this, so we'll go to weapon, and we'll go to some machine guns, and then there's this one which is locked. I haven't got this yet. And to unlock it, I have to use an unlock key. I've got three keys already. Um, I've actually unlocked loads of stuff. This has been playing for about a day. So within a day's worth of, well, when I say a day, but about three or four hours. Three or four hours would have allowed me to unlock about eight or nine weapons, which is quite cool. And then you get separate keys for the... Let's go back to what I've already got. Let's go back. Mod. And then you get these... Unlocks, which are basically modifications. So I've got a four times scope on there. But I could have a body older sniffer, which allows me to see through walls. And I can use an unlock key for mods. And I've got 12 of those keys, so. Right now, it seems like anything you want, you can just go and get. After playing for not very long at all. And you've got your paint jobs, which are basically your camos. They're not placed on the weapons perfectly. It's more like they've just got a tileable texture and just stuck it on there. But it does work quite well. It's got a nice stylized feel to it. You've got your gadgets, which are... These are the cool things. These are what make this game so fucking fun. And I'm being serious, guys. I'm being serious, guys. This is one of the most fun first-person shooters I have ever played in my life. So right now, I've got the spring boots, which are a charge-up, and I get to jump really high. You'll see those in the gameplay soon. And I've got a grapple gun. And the grapple gun is what it sounds like. I fire it, it sticks into a wall and pulls me towards it. I've got a gliding kit, so if I jump off anything high, I can fly around the map. Roller skates, which make you go faster. Inflatable swords, which allow you to do double jumps. Targeting goggles, which I believe lets you see through walls. Ninja smoke bombs, that allow you to become nigh invisible, but you can't use a weapon. That's quite cool. So, basically, invisibility. And a jetpack, which I haven't used this, obviously it's still locked. But I've seen people using it and it looks stupid as hell. It's so funny. So that's what you got there. Fun facts are basically your perks. So regenerative. And I have got marksman on. But I could have kind of bulletproof. Which would make me survive a little bit more. I take less from blade attacks. Thick headed. Hmm. These are your kill streaks, basically. So when I get a kill streak, I am as tough as nail, which reduces all damage by 75% for 15 seconds. I mainly play as a sniper class, and that's why I've got this. Because when if if I get ganked, basically, if five people just pop out and like jump out of nowhere, this will allow me to hopefully survive because I play this game quite well to be honest, so it doesn't take me long to um actually how do I say it? it doesn't take me long to get the kill streaks. So my site profile, I haven't actually looked at this yet. In denial, subject currently manifests no symptoms of whatever personality disorder. So ah right, so these are advantage slash disadvantages. Oh, antisocial subject displays no empathy towards 
bonus for selfish actions, penalty for team actions, penalty for combat related actions, bonus when team is winning, penalty when the team is losing. I always win, so I'm gonna get that one, I think. And I actually suffer from bipolar, if anyone didn't know, so. There we go. Every time you buy something, I'll show you next time I buy something. Every time you buy something, you actually, uh, we'll go for the sport items. I'll just buy one of these randomly to show you. Body armor. So we'll go with this and we'll click on lock and it'll show you a little uh, cartoon. Body armor automatically reduces damage by a certain percentage whenever it is worn. When you shoot an enemy wearing body armor, you will see sparks fly off them. <laughs> body armor does not help against bird traps, boomerang, penetrator, ammo, or freeze damage. And there's one of those for almost everything you unlock, including weapons, so that, I don't know, I just find it totally hilarious. I absolutely love them little cartoons. I wish there was a way to see them separately, but I haven't found a way to see them separately, which is a shame. But I, I, I should have actually done a video just uploading all those, shouldn't I? Anyway, so I think we've gone through everything that we need to go through right now, so we're going to jump into a game. It normally works straight away. Normally. Actually, what's, what's track record? Feats of prowess, daily. All right, so you got all your stats and everything like that. Let's see my lifetime. Level one awards. All right, so I've, I'm the most valuable person, 32 times. Yeah, it's because I'm a badass, mate. That must be that every single time I've played, I've not come bottom. I've not come below first place at all. Finishing the top three lineups 35 times. Well, I must have done, but they must have been joining in late. Become the enemies of an enemy 50 times. That just shows how dominating I can be. Survive 50 headshots. See, I haven't survived 50 headshots yet because they can't hit me in the head. Okay, so yeah, that's quite cool. So I get to see these weapons. Wow, there seems to be absolutely loads. If you used to get into this game, this could take you an awful long time to go through, which is really, really cool. Stamps of excellence. Oh, look at them all. Which you never got the most of. Most kills of a single player. <laughs> 17 times. Oh, golden hourglass. Kill every member of the enemy team at least once. That should be quite easy. Most overall headshots, regardless of whether they are lethal, 13 times. You can only get two of these per round, by the way, so... I might have done that a lot more than 13 times, but... Is there anything nice and cool? Running shoes. Travel the greatest distance. See, I'm not a camper, even though I'm a sniper. I'm not good. Then again, saying that, Eagle Nest... Stay at the average, the highest average altitude in the level eight times. Maybe I'm a little bit of a camper, but I'm running around while doing it. That's all I can say. Um, okay, so we'll come off this and we'll go to play now. So you got all these kind of modes. You've got team deathmatch, fumigation, capture, gas blasters to unleash your attack. I don't know what it is. Psychic warfare, grab the battery and plug it into your demoralized plug it in to demoralize your enemies with propaganda. So what happened? You stick it in and it goes, ha ha, you suck, ha ha, you suck, you can't catch me. Nah, 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 nah. Bounty Hunter, think, kill confirmed. Basically the same. Challenges, so you get to challenge yourself to earn medals and extra experience. I haven't done the, any of these yet. And then you've got your, uh, basically tutorial, take a moment and familiarize, familiarize, familiarize familiarize yourself with the basic and there's pizza mmm we're going to a basic team deathmatch it's all matchmaking there's no dedicated servers unfortunately but what will happen now is it will look to join me into a session which will happen any moment now any moment it's been working fine all day guys I've not had to wait yet 
I'm just being unlucky, aren't I? Any moment. Yeah. Any day now. There's lots of people playing this. You've seen how many. You've seen my stats. I'm not like like I'm not lying at all. Click back, yes, and let's try that again. Maybe it's just glitched out. If there is a problem right now, I will just talk over a pre-done gameplay, I think. Oh no, there we go. It just bugged out a little bit. It is quite buggy, really, and the bugs aren't game-breaking by any means. They're just a little bit of frustrations. Like, every now and then you'll get a frame drop to zero FPS for a second. And it's really, really frustrating, but it's not the end of the world. It's kind of disappointing that there's so many bugs when the game's been released for so long. I think that's where my issue is. Look at that, level 43. Beast mode in it. Oh, it's level 30. Okay, so it looks like I'm just jumping into a game which is about to end, which would be totally typical when I'm recording a video. But, what can I say? So we are going to pick the first Lord out, which you saw me messing around with before. And look at the spring boots that I showed you. Use your middle mouse button to use your gadget. And whee! You can actually jump really freaking high. And there's less than 30 seconds left in this. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to put up... up, oh, and it's a laggy server. Yeah, just as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut away now, and I'm going to just get you a random gameplay when I can actually get one that works. And then we'll talk over that in post. It'll actually give me some more chance to go over some of the actual features. So, yep. Yeah, one second. Well, give me five, four, three, two... One. Okay guys, so now we're back. I do apologize for that. It turns out that it wasn't the actual game itself. It's my internet connections playing up a little bit. And you'll see that at the end of the video where it actually boots me out because I lose connection, unfortunately. But this is Gotham City Imposters. This is exactly what the game is all about. As you can see, the graphic style is semi Call of Duty, as in it's Call of Duty with bright colours and the camos on the weapons are just over the top and crazy. And yeah, as you can see me right now using these spring boots that I was talking about, I am jumping mega, mega high. It it just feels like a pleasure to use. Um, overall, what I'd have to say about the game is it is Call of Duty mixed with Team Fortress 2. The game plays very much arcade-like, as in... All the weapons are really quite accurate. There's no sway on the scopes on the sniper rifles, and everything's like instant hit. And all the um, like on the sniper rifles, especially all the shots just go bang exactly where you want them to, which makes it quite skill-based, especially when you can move around like a madman. I have to say that when I first downloaded the game, I wasn't expecting that much. I've seen other videos on the actual game, and everybody says it's great, but I just looked at it and I was like, eh, it looks a bit dodgy. But then I played it yesterday, and I have to say, this is possibly my favourite game of the year. All bugs aside, I mean, the frame rate drops, which I think happen once or twice. The fact that there are basically bullshit ways to kill people on this. Like, you've got your claymores, and you've got dodgy kind of dive mechanics. You've got all the strange stuff which comes with a strange game. But you're still able to dominate if you can play games well. And that is what I've always wanted in a first person shooter. It's not like Call of Duty where you could be playing really well, like skill wise, but still get your ass handed to you because someone decides to camp in a corner, get a chopper gunner and get 30 kills in a row. In this, you've got your kill streaks, which are very, very minor. I mean, if I got five kills with my standard class, I'd probably get onto the first, like the only kill streak level bonus, which is Rampage. And then all it would do is give me, like, 50% less damage for 20 seconds. It's it's really not a huge, huge thing. So, it, it does require more skill than a game like Call of Duty. And it does mean that if you're a skilled player, you are able to stomp just a little, little bit more than what you probably used to be able to do on a normal first-person shooter. Which is good and bad at the same time. It's good because it feels totally amazing to go around and just get like 30 kills without dying. And it's bad because people start calling you a hacker, they start leaving. But the game's only just come out. A lot of these people have only been playing for a day like myself. 
And they will get better at the game, and they'll get used to it, they'll start to understand the mechanics, and it'll all get better. The games are quite easy to find, there's a surprising amount of people playing on it, and the biggest thing with Gotham City Impostors, why I didn't buy it when it first was released, was simply because, not that I didn't like the idea, because I buy most games, it's because it was running games for Windows fucking live. We all know what that is, don't we? The thing that totally breaks your computer every time that you use a game trying to run it. Yeah. But I'm very, very happy to say that in this free-to-play version, they have removed game for Windows Live functionality. Which means, yay! No bullshit. No messing around. It just works. Works straight out of the box. A few bugs here and there, like I have mentioned, but overall, it is cool. The character I'm using right now is the Assassin. It doesn't look like an Assassin wearing rollerblades and with a big heavy shotgun, does he? But it's the Assassin class. It's a default class. You actually get five or six default classes. And unlike most first-person shooters, I have to be honest with you guys, the default classes in Gotham City Imposters are beast. They are like, even if you unlocked everything in the game and tried to build your, better, your best class, there's only going to be slight differences from the default classes because that's how good they are. You are totally able to just jump into a game and play with the default classes and destroy everybody who's playing, which is something that you don't see very often. And that is what brings me onto the free-to-play model. Basically, you can unlock weapons early, or you can get cosmetic items. I like this idea, but it kind of worries me. I, I don't understand how Warner Brothers Interactive are going to be able to get enough income based off customization. When you get so much customization just off playing for free, you don't have to get any weapons or anything like that. It's kind of a little bit worrying, like, have they made the wrong business choice? Should they have limited more off in the free-to-play version. I personally think they should have done. I think the level curve should be so, so much harder because if you've seen on the channel, I actually uploaded a video about leveling up in this game and in two rounds, my first two rounds that I ever played on this game, I got up to level 17. And that gave me like enough stuff to unlock like five weapons, like 10 modifications, loads and loads of the uh, cosmetic stuff. And I was thinking then, like, wow, if I play for a couple more days, I'm going to basically have everything. And that's not how you want a free-to-play game to work, so I am a little bit concerned about that. But that's just a business model. What we actually come here to watch is the actual game. And what I can tell you right now is, if you haven't started downloading this game already, then you're crazy. This game is amazing. This is a really, really good game. It runs pretty damn well. The gameplay is fun and kinetic it's it's one of the best first person shooters i've ever played at first i wondered why would they put all these modern military weapons in a game like this which is also so slapstick but that's when it hit me honestly the mixture between goofy and realistic is what makes this game unique in many respects it, it's almost like you're playing call of duty slapstick edition it, it just Look, there's a guy running around on rollerblades with a samurai sword. Two of them. Versus me, who is a guy which is built like the heavy from TF2 with a realistic weapon. It's just so, so much fun. And like I said, I don't understand why it didn't do so well in the first place. I think it must have been something to do with marketing or something because the game itself to me is totally amazing. This being Team Deathmatch is all about just getting the most kills. As you can see, we was dominating. I didn't check my scoreboard that often. I've been waiting for it to pop up again. So, yeah. I was pretty damn certain I was probably quite high first. And this happens. Basically, my connection to Steam had gone. Your initial connection to the Steam service. Returning to the title page. So, anyway, guys. That is the end of the video. Gotham City Imposters is a great game with so much fun to be had. I definitely recommend that you guys go out and try it. If you want to add me on the service, just add me on Steam. Um, add Bunny Kinks, B-U-N-N-Y-K-I-N-X. Yep, yeah, that's it. And yeah, we can get a couple of games together. It'd be good to have a game of like 10 friends playing together, so. Anyway, guys, that is the end of the video. I will catch you next time. Please don't forget to slap that subscribe button for some more PC gaming goodness and watch the outro. Way. See you later, guys.